what does trance mean to you? Straight in, no kissing, straight in with the deep, deep questions. This is like a Sunday morning question you ask after a sesh. Uh, trance for me is all about like, well, obviously my definition for trance is probably different from other people. Like I, my, as you guys know, my sound is a lot harder edged and I take a lot of influence from hard dance. Um, but trance to me is like, I don't know, it's just, it's the emotion, it's the feeling that it makes me feel. It's just that sense of euphoria and, oh, it's, I don't know, man. It's like it's hard to it's hard to put any words. It's just it's the way it makes me feel that makes it so much more different than any other genre of music out there. Like I listen to everything, man. Like across the board. Like I listen to like metal. I listen to Gabba sometimes. You know what I mean? Like uh, then I'll be listening to Progressive, and then I'll be listening to Tech House the next day. You know what I mean? So like yeah, trance is just trance is the only genre of music that really gives me that that feeling that the, the goosebumps, the, the tingles. Like that's the only way I can put any words. Right, so the world is about to end and you're organising the last ever party. Which DJs would you book to play? Uh, in progression, I would, it would go something like Eli Brown, who's a tech house DJ, Grum, uh, Billy Gillis, Shogs, Renegade System, obviously looking after my mates, Scott Project, myself, of course. It's the last party ever I want to play at it. Call me selfish if you want. And TNT, Hardstyle Legends. What is your greatest fear? Uh, <laughs> Well, being ginger, probably the sun, or going bald, which is also inevitably going to happen at some point soon. What is your earliest memory? <laughs> I don't even know, man. I smoke that much weed that my brain is just mush. <laughs> I've got no, I've got actual no memory. Uh, probably I was like three years old and I put like cream in my eyes. I, I, that's, I don't know why I remember that. I think it was just it was such a fucking traumatic experience. Have you ever said, I love you and not meant it? Well. Considering I used to be a clubber myself and used to go out and get absolutely smashed every weekend and go to the arches, then I probably said I love you to random people. I think I said, I said I love you to the toilet attendants on many occasions as well. What's your guilty pleasure? Guiltiest pleasure? Fuck. That doesn't leave a lot. Probably Scooter. <laughs> but who doesn't love a bit of Scooter, man? Come on. All time favourite movie. That's probably one of the most difficult questions you could ask me because I'm a, people might not know this, but I'm actually a proper movie buff. Um but I'd probably say my favourite movie ever would be The Lost Boys and the soundtrack's unbelievable too. So if you haven't seen that film, have a word with yourself. Who hasn't seen fucking Lost Boys? If you could change one thing most about the world, what would it be? What would I change? Well, obviously, given the current situation, I would hope that things would get back to normal. That would that would be my biggest wish. I just want to get back to working, man. Like, yeah. I've had a really productive couple of months, obviously during lockdown, I've made some of the best music I've made so far, um, obviously I've been working on like my personal fitness and stuff like that and really looking after myself a bit more, stuff that I really struggled to maintain while I was touring a lot, but yeah I'm ready to get back to, ready to get back to working, uh, I just want everything to go back to normal, that's the only thing I would ask from the world at the moment and probably just chip in a little bit of world peace there, the old cliche answer. What is the most important lesson life has taught you? Probably that everything can be taken away from you in a heartbeat, like I was just so comfortable in my life before all this stuff and like everything was going great and I was really really happy and all that and then all of a sudden boom everything just changes and I kind of feel like you're back to square one in a sense so like never take anything for granted is definitely the life lesson for me in a film about your life, who would play you? <laughs> Obviously Danny DeVito. Um, you're allowed one alcoholic drink for the rest of your life, what do you choose? Hmm, I wonder. Hard question, obviously buck fast. If you were an animal, what would you be? Probably like a fox or something, I would say. Which track from your back catalogue best defines you and your sound? To be honest, it's probably a track that I haven't even released yet. It's one that I've, I've made during lockdown. Um, it's called The Beat. It's an influence of all styles of music I love. There's a bit of techno in it. There's a bit of hard dance, there's even a bit of hard style and there's a really, really, really lush uplift and breakdown, man. Like it's one of the best breakdowns I've ever made. There's just so much layers in it and there's pianos and there's vocals and there's ad libs and shit, man. And just the melodies. Well, I think the melody's huge. It gives me the feelings anyway, like, you know what I mean? Um, so I would say that's probably the track from my back catalogue that best defines my sound. And I'm sure you guys will hear that very soon anyway. When did you last cry and why? I think I've cried every weekend. I was supposed to have a scheduled gig. To be honest, if you weren't a DJ or a producer, what would you be? I'd probably still be working in my old job. Um, I worked in a call centre for like five years before I went full time in 2018. Or I'd be a bum, either or. What's your favourite country to travel in? Oh, this is a minefield here. Um, every country 
that I've been to, I've, I've loved for different reasons. But for the sheer love that I get in return, it has to be in Northern Ireland. Like, uh, like my popularity over there is just, I just can't even, I can't even fathom it sometimes. It's just insane, absolutely insane. Um, it's definitely my strongest market. But other than that, like notable mentions would obviously be Argentina, because I absolutely love Argentina. I played in Argentina for the first time in December to become one, and it was a life changing experience, no doubt about it. Um, also, Australia. I played in Australia last year for the first time in December, and it absolutely blew me away. Like, I just love the people, and they love the harder stuff, which is obviously my thing. So yeah, that's the answer to that. Top three trans tracks of all time. An impossible question <laughs> for me to answer. That's just as hard as the movies. But uh, off the top of my head, John O'Callaghan and Brian Carney, exactly. Obviously, like that's one of the tunes that got me into trans. And then digging a little bit further back into the more kind of commercial realms of trans, uh, Thrill Seekers, Synesthesia, and so what else you can what is the one thing coming up in your schedule that you are most excited about just to get back to gigging honestly like i don't care if i'm playing a hundred people or if i'm playing a hundred thousand which obviously would never happen probably but um yeah i just really want to get back i just want to get back to the lifestyle and i, I miss the traveling like i love traveling about which is really unusual but i'm probably probably after a couple of years of intense touring i'll knock that out myself but yeah, just I just really looking forward to getting back to those moments and just like don't know DJing with my mates and stuff and seeing my mates like obviously like Shugs. I've not seen Shugs since February, man. He's one of my best mates. Like last year, I seen Shugs bloody every month at least once. And it's just hard getting that taken away from me because obviously he's in Northern Ireland and I'm over here. And then obviously you've got Renegade System too and Billy Gillis, they're my really close mates. Um, it's just crap, man, at the moment because we can't see anyone. But yeah, that's the thing I'm most looking forward to is just getting back to it, man. Just getting back to the grind and getting on with things, you know getting some music out I'm kind of holding back and releasing the tracks that I've got because I feel as if it'll be like a drop of pish in the, the ocean at the moment just due to the current situation and it's not really fun getting to it's not really fun releasing tracks when the promo is so thin because you don't have any decent gig videos and stuff like that a final message for the dedicated trans fans on the trans portal I just want to say thanks to everyone for all the support I've had over the years like I've got a really really kind of unique sound and um, it's not everyone's cup of tea man sometimes it's not really as emotional as a lot of the other trans artists my kind of sound um, there's a lot of like harder influence in there but I definitely feel as if in the future that's the way things are going to go um, I hope so anyway so yeah just thanks to everyone the hardcore people that have supported me since day one and stuff like that and, and obviously I hope to see you guys soon and I hope you all stay safe and look after yourselves and look after your family. I hopefully we'll meet each other on my dance floor soon. Thanks for Transportal for giving me the chance to have a little say. Let me waffle on a lot of shit while I drink a coffee. Um, and I hope to see you guys again soon. Take care guys.